In boxing, fighters often come back stronger after a loss, driven by the desire to regain what they've lost. But things are different when you face one of the best ever, Mike Tyson, also known as Iron Mike. Tyson's incredible power, speed, and aggression didn't just defeat his opponents, they've changed their careers forever. In this video, we'll look at Mike Tyson's opponents and see how their careers went before and after facing him. I'm fighting him back, using my experience, my bread and butter punches and that hook, and keep him at bay. I don't want to run from him, I want to stay there and fight him, because nobody hasn't done that and see how he reacts. I feel I have a better chance of beating him if he goes in the later rounds, but it doesn't go in the later rounds, it's fire. In the earlier rounds, I'm strong. In the later rounds, I get strong. And I feel that I, I, I can beat Mike Tyson. In February 1986, Mike Tyson stepped into the ring with Jesse Ferguson. This fight was crucial for Tyson to prove he was a serious contender for the world title and not just an overhyped young boxer. Tyson quickly showed his dominance pressuring Ferguson to the ropes. Here, he unleashed his signature move, a powerful right hook to the body followed by a brutal right uppercut to the head. This combination sent Ferguson crashing to the canvas. This fight demonstrated Tyson's exceptional power and solidified his reputation as a formidable force in boxing. After the fight with Tyson, Ferguson continued to box but never regained the momentum he had before. Tyson's victory over Ferguson was a stepping stone that led him closer to a world title shot and Ferguson's career, while still active, was never quite the same. No, not really. I just um, got off my game plan. But uh, Mike is, is a good fighter. But, um, I just got off my game plan. You said yesterday that you were worried about the uppercut. It was indeed the uppercut that he caught you with. Yeah, he got me on the nose and it, it dazed me, water went in my eyes, and I went out. Actually, you hear all trainers and other fighters, they'll say, don't fight in another guy's game when I plan to get right in his game with him. This guy's vulnerable, makes lots of mistakes, and I'm ready for the guy, and I've also examined the, the things Mr. Tyson does, his flaws, and I know what I'm gonna do for him when he makes those mistakes. We haven't seen Mike Tyson hurt in a fight yet. Can you hurt Mike Tyson? Is there a way, is there anything that you you and your people feel uh, he's susceptible to? Yeah, I, c I can hurt him, and I'm gonna hurt him fry him, and... Yeah. With what? I can't, I just, just go into the fight and see. I'm, I have a few things I want to show to Mr. Tyson. I choose not to say, but uh, it'll be pretty evident when the fight starts. There is something too hurting, and I know what it is. On July 11, 1986, in Swan Lake, New York, Mike Tyson faced Lorenzo Boyd. Tyson weighed in at 220 pounds, while Boyd was 21 pounds lighter. From the opening bell, Tyson dominated the fight. He immediately broke Boyd's nose with a first punch, setting the tone for the match. Despite Boyd's attempts to fight back, his punches were no match for Tyson's raw power. In the second round, Tyson delivered a series of uppercuts that knocked Boyd at 1 minute and 43 seconds. This win marked Tyson's 24th consecutive victory keeping his undefeated record intact and reinforcing his status as a rising star in the heavyweight division. Lorenzo, assess his performance. How does he punch? He's stronger than I thought he was. Uh, he caught me real good in the rib cage down here on the uh, left side, and I became fearful then because I told myself I have to remind myself not to bring my hand down to protect it. He hit it again, I brought my elbow down. In case you don't know, it was a right hand and then a right uppercut right to the uppercut. chin. Is he the hardest hitter you've ever been in with? Yes, I, I fought at Terry Anderson and they considered him a big banger, but uh, he doesn't punch anything like Mike. In your opinion, can this man, Mike Tyson, beat any heavyweight in the world right now? 
yes, he'll go all the way. I've been doing a good job, he's a good fighter. But now with me, me, I'm the champ, but don't bother me, you know. He's trying to get what I want, what I have. And um, that's enough for me to think about. Yes, I work hard, I train, I prepare myself physically. Yes, I'm a soldier of the cross. And I will defeat all devils that come my way. This is my calling. And I will do it in fine style and fine grace, because I love my Lord. On November 22, 1986, in Las Vegas, 20-year-old Mike Tyson challenged 32-year-old Trevor Burbick for the World Heavyweight title. Burbick, who had won the title in March of 1986, was defending it for the first time. He confidently predicted he would handle Tyson within seven rounds. However, Tyson had different plans. Burbick made the mistake of trying to stand and trade punches with Tyson, which proved disastrous. Tyson's powerful punches shook Burbick early on. In the second round, Tyson's controlled aggression and precise strikes overwhelmed Burbick, knocking him down twice. Burbick struggled to stay on his feet, prompting the referee to stop the fight. Tyson became the youngest world heavyweight champion in history at 20 years old fulfilling the prophecy of his late mentor, Cusdemato. After losing to Tyson, Burbick's career declined and he never regained the heavyweight title. This victory was a milestone for Tyson, marking the beginning of his reign as the undisputed heavyweight champion. Did you feel that if you could show him you could take his best shot, that you would then be able to dominate him? I would think that's probably what the game that I thought I could do, you know? But was he a better puncher than you anticipated? Yeah, it went pretty hard because I felt it. It wasn't a one-shot knockout thing, but it was hard enough. And I said, well, I, I shake it for the second round. Yeah. And I said, I shake it for the second round. I said, he's going to come again and I can kill his power. But apparently, I got caught like Angela said. <laughs> was, he, was, his, was he faster than you expected? Well, pretty fast. I saw it, but, um, gee, you know, I still can't believe, but... <laughs> You know, it, I was trying to force myself to believe that I... And I want to perform because the last fight, uh, uh, the Tyson and um, uh, Bone Crusher fought was a waltz. And um, I don't plan to do the waltz. I think that Tyson's so used to going in and, and racking guys on the chin and knocking them cold or walking away. Um, I think Smith just proves the point that you know, the kid is not uh, invincible. He's just too young to understand. <laughs> I think I forgot about more than he probably know or will probably learn than anything. So he's got to go to school yet. And he haven't faced an opponent like me. He haven't faced the caliber of a fighter like me. He haven't faced a real champion. And I'm a champion. On May 31, 1987, Mike Tyson defended his WBA and WBC titles against Pinkland Thomas. Thomas, coming into the fight with a record of three consecutive victories, was considered a serious challenge for Tyson. In the early rounds, Thomas managed to withstand Tyson's pressure and showcased his own skills. However, in the sixth round, Tyson unleashed a devastating combination of uppercuts and hooks culminating in a powerful left hook that sent Thomas crashing to the canvas. Thomas was unable to beat the count, and the referee stopped the fight, declaring Tyson the winner. I believe that what I've been through, and as good as I am, I know that I, I know how good I am. And for me to have been criticized and the whole shot, I mean, you know, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat Michael Tyson like I am his dad. He's, he's made for Tyson. I, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat this fellow and be called the new undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. On October 16, 1987, Mike Tyson fought Tyrell Biggs. Biggs, a former Olympic gold medalist, was seen as a tough opponent for Tyson. From the start, Biggs tried to neutralize Tyson's power by clinching and using his reach advantage. However, 
Tyson's relentless aggression and power soon overwhelmed Biggs. In the seventh round, Tyson landed a series of punishing blows, including a powerful left hook that knocked Biggs down. Biggs, with his face bloodied, managed to get up at the count of nine but was in no condition to continue. The referee stopped the fight and Tyson was declared the winner. Before facing Tyson, Biggs had an impressive amateur and professional record. After the fight, Biggs' career took a downward turn and he struggled to regain his previous form. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the careers of Mike Tyson's opponents before and after facing him. Which fight do you think had the most monumental impact on Mike's career? Comment it down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.